Well, welcome everybody. Grateful and thankful to have you here. I want to tell you about these five women. They were uh, hiking, they were out in nature, and it was a hot summer day. And these five ladies are all great friends. They came upon this lake <clears throat> and it was hot. <clears throat> they needed to take a break, wanted to take a break. So these, these women, they're all friends, decided to get naked and hop into the lake. And they were there swimming. They were having a great time. It was very refreshing for them. And then the next thing you know, this farmer strolls upon them. And, uh, and all the ladies start hooting and hollering. They're covering themselves up. And they're like, get out of here. You know, they're, they're screaming to this guy to turn around and um, said, you know, we're not getting out of here until, until you leave. And so the farmer said to the ladies, he said, ladies, I did not come here to see you swimming around naked. I came here to feed the alligators. You see, most Americans today are swimming around an alligator and they have absolutely no clue. The alligators of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's, obesity, subluxation, so on and so forth, and these Diseases of lifestyle are just waiting for the right opportunity to strike. That's why I'm here today over the next 50 minutes to share some really empowering information to help you not only sleep better, but have the energy, the vitality, the strength to be able to do the things that you want to be doing and minimizing your chances of any chronic diseases and illness and needing to take any dangerous drugs and avoid any unnecessary surgeries. I've been doing these talks in Northern Virginia now for the last 15 years and simply put, the ones who engage get the most out of these talks. So my encouragement to you is, is once you hear a golden nugget, type it up into the chat, type it up into the chat of a takeaway, a declaration, what is the one thing that you're committed to making a pivot on in your lifestyle over the next 30 days? What is that one thing? What is that one thing that we can hold you accountable to so that you can get the best results possible, save time, money, energy in the process? Most people are walking around like this. I see it in their faces. I see it in their posture. I see it in their core score. The technology that we measure to see how your body is adapting to stress. Most people are alive, but they're running on low juice. The battery is low. Are Americans unhealthy? Absolutely. COVID stressed the system and exposed the ugly truth that Americans and people around the world are unhealthy. $4.1 trillion was spent in 2020 on health care. 75% of all the drugs consumed in the world are consumed by Americans. Yet we only have 5% of the world's population. So if money and drugs were the solution to your sleep issues, your energy issues, your fatigue issues, your health issues, We'd be the healthiest people on the planet, yet the World Health Organization ranks us only 47th in the world in overall health. And the disturbance in our sleep, and really what it comes down are these circadian rhythms that modern life and our lifestyle is unfit to produce health and wellness in your life. You see, look, if you want to be healthy, the truth is it's not going to be easy these days. It's not impossible, but it's not easy. It's hard. We don't want to make it harder. So tonight, I want to reveal to you some tactics, secrets, strategies to help make it easier so you're not making it harder on yourself. But these sleep issues, our, our chronic lifestyle, living, 
has produced metabolic syndrome that has created the ideal perfect condition for disease and symptoms and illness and pain to manifest. And this chronic issue became acute overnight once a badass virus came to town. And I can tell you, there's going to be more badass viruses coming into town. The question is, are you going to be ready? Because there's no amount of vaccines and there's no amount of masking is going to make up for the work that you're not doing. And what I mean by that is the vaccines and the masks will not be able to cover up poor lifestyle living. Poor lifestyle habits is what's leading to our health care crisis today. Leading, in, leading us into a sick care crisis. There's no amount of money or drugs that's going to solve this problem. It's going to have to be a dedicated effort on your part to do the work, to put your body in an environment where it's going to thrive and produce health and remove it from a sick, toxic, deficient environment. So what are the results with these vaccines and masks? They failed to prevent SARS-CoV-2 and COVID infection transmission severity. And the vaccinated can become infected and transmitted with SARS-CoV-2 as readily as the unvaccinated. And the same is also true for those wearing or not wearing masks. And now the data indicates that COVID-19 vaccines are failing to adequately protect those at high risk for serious COVID-19 illness. Well, what about all the side effects that keep coming out from these vaccines? Tonight is not about uh, going down that lane, it's about what we can do to help you shift your focus from the strength of the virus to the strength of the host. How can you become a healthier, stronger human being? I hope you have a notepad and you're taking notes because we're going to go through a lot of information here that is going to teach you how to become a strong, healthy human being. But first, we must understand that health is an inside out process, not outside in. And what I mean by that is you are designed to be healthy. Healthy is normal. Sick is abnormal. Sick has become the new norm. I'm here to remind you that you are designed to be healthy. It is our lifestyle habits that move us away from our optimal health. And your body is smart. It is incredibly smart. It's super intelligent. Your body was designed with all these circadian rhythms so that once you see this clock right here, you, you need to understand this clock. It's a must for you if you want to be a healthy, strong human being. Because let's see, it is 715. So right about now, your body temperature is going to be at its highest. As slowly as the night progresses, it's going to slowly start to decrease. And at nine o'clock, is where your melatonin secretion starts from the pineal gland in the brain. And that is to get you into this uh, a sleepy state. And then we go into your deepest sleep is at two in the morning. And at 4.30 in the morning is the lowest body temperature. And around the 6, 6.45, cortisol starts to be released. Now we talk about cortisol being a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's a good thing, but our lifestyle can make it become a bad thing. 645, blood pressure starts to rise. 730, melatonin stops secreting so that you can wake up. 10 a.m. is your highest alertness. And we're gonna get into more of this as we go through this, but I want you to know that your body, you are incredibly intelligent. So if your body is not functioning, and feeling incredibly intelligent, there's a reason. Now we can just mask this by throwing drugs at this more and more, but that's not gonna fix the root underlying problem. We're all about getting to the root cause, DC, doctor of chiropractic, doctor of cause. That's where DC comes from. So we're in this healthcare crisis because what you believe about your health drives how you behave about your health and how you behave about your health determines your health outcomes. So if we're looking to optimize our outcomes, we must look at our behaviors, which are driven by your beliefs. Because Americans today believe that if I feel good, I must be healthy. And that once there's a symptom, 
that's only the first sign that there's a problem. And once a symptom is gone, you're healthy. So we might think that overall, I feel good. That must mean that my body must be functioning great. And I don't really need to do anything more. Or then if you have one night of bad sleep or two nights or, or a week or so on and so forth, you might just see that as that's the first sign of a problem. And once that symptom goes away, you're able to sleep better again, and now you're healthy. But maybe those, those beliefs aren't 100% true because that can lead us to believing that your health is like a toggle switch, that you toggle between uh, health and sickness. But this is an incomplete story is that most people today are toggling between sick and not sick. And it's when you get stuck in the not sick, you're just one crisis away from your health being completely disrupting your lifestyle, your quality of life, affecting what you need to do, what you want to do, and what you love to do. What we're trying to do is drive you more toward the uh, health here, where it's uh, optimal function. Because when you're sick and not sick, and when you're sleep deprived, when you're exhausted, when you're tired, when you're fatigued, when you have low energy, you're immunocompromised and your body is now more susceptible to the viruses, bacteria, the germs in the environment. Look folks, the reason that you you're, have any health issue that shows up is not because of bad genes, bad luck or bad germs. It's a poor lifestyle. And I want to, by the end of this, it should be very clear of what healthy normal is. You'll identify where you're at in the next one to two action steps to help close the gap. So the sleep issues that we'll be talking about this evening specifically are sleep apnea, thoracic outlet, restless leg. And those are simply just a body signal to alert you that there's an underlying problem. It's what's below the surface is the alligator that we're talking about here. Symptoms are body signals and it's your way of asking for help and sometimes begging for help because a symptom in the body is simply a stress that your body is no longer able to adapt to, whether it's mental, whether it's chemical and, or whether it's physical. And remember how you sleep, how you recover your energy or lack thereof is simply just pointing what direction you're heading in on this illness wellness continuum. If you're completely exhausted, if you're like flatlined and you are trying to sleep, but you're not really getting quality rest, your body is crying for help because there's a stressor that it's unable to adapt to. And if you feel like you're waking up, rejuvenated, refreshed, have unlimited energy, then likely you're on the right side of the spectrum where you're achieving more optimal health function. Symptoms tell you what direction you're headed in. So as we talk about the three tiers of health, remember treatment of disease is just to keep people alive. Prevention of disease would be like no hugs or high fives, social distance. And while Treatment of disease and prevention of disease may be appropriate at certain times, neither do anything to strengthen you, strengthen the host. And that's what tonight is all about. That's what we speak here at Pure Chiropractic. What are the activities, the lifestyle, the behaviors that if we can show you what it takes to be a healthy, strong human being and encourage you to engage in these behaviors, not only is your care going to be enhanced here in the office, but your outcomes, not only in the short term, but long term, you're going to see bigger returns on that. Promotion of health. Tonight, we need to create awareness for you on those activities and behaviors and lifestyle that you need to slow down in doing. Then to be able to get you to stop, create a pivot, and start doing specific activities and behaviors to produce better health. But tonight, it's about better sleep. It's about better adaptability to the stress that you're under so you can sleep better. And then this is all about recovery and repair, optimizing the body's recovery and repair systems 
So through the night, you're actually using sleep as a weapon to get stronger, to add more power, more juice to your battery, so that you're starting from a stronger position the next day to be able to tackle all the alligators that are coming at you again, to do the things that you need to do, work, family, to be able to do the things that you want to do, exercise, vacation, hobbies, things like that. So secret number two here is that your health is directly proportional to your body's resilience to stress. You see, we are living, you are living unnaturally. And when we live unnaturally against how we are hardwired as a species, then you can expect illness and disease and symptoms to be the natural consequence of that. So let me ask you, is your life stressful? Hands up if your life is stressful. All right, we are seeing the hands going bang, 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 bang. Modern life is unnaturally stressful. And there's three types of stress, right? You can have good stress. Type it up in the chat. Somebody give me an example of some good stress. What's some good stress out there? That's right, Catherine, working out. Is it normal for your blood pressure to go up when you work out? Type it up in the chat. Is it normal for your blood pressure to go up when you're working out? Yes, that's right. How about your breathing? Is that normal for that to go up? Is it normal for your heart rate to go up? Yep, exactly. Okay, so there's good stress out there. No doubt about it. You know, the reason why we exercise is stress the muscles to build up the muscle tissue and also to strengthen the bones. So there's good stress out there. So I don't want you to think that all stress is bad. We call that eustress, but there's the bad type of stress, which is called distress. This is the mental stress, the chemical stress, the physical stress that you are bombarding your body with day in and day out. This is the social stress, psychological, emotional stress. You don't, we, we've established that you're under stress, but take a look at the world at large. How can you not be under stress? The pandemic, inflation, war, and it goes on and on and on. And it's almost like somebody just keeps pouring gasoline on all the stress that's going on. My job is to get you to focus on what you can do to adapt better to that stress so that stress doesn't bury you because that stress starts to pile up over and over and over and it gets heavier and heavier. And not only can it affect your energy and your vitality and function and your health and your well-being, but it also starts to impact your ability to stay focused, to concentrate to be present for not only yourself, but your spouse or loved one, family members, kids, coworkers, neighbors, friends. And then it starts to impact your ability to be productive, to have the energy, the power to add value in people's lives. So there's a complete ripple effect associated here with all this stress. And I don't know about you, and we're going to talk about this because it pertains to sleep, but for some reason, when I'm under a lot of stress and I'm not dealing with it very well, at about nine o'clock at night, this little gremlin starts talking in my ear, whispering, hey, Brandon, go to the pantry. Now, all of a sudden, like, it seems like the solution to everything is in that pantry. And you know, and you're like, okay, I'm going to have a few chips. You grab a little bowl. You put some chips in the bowl, but then you leave the bowl in the pantry and you go grab the whole bag. And then at the end of the bag, you're like, oh man, that probably wasn't a good idea. So then we're under this excessive chemical stress. And I don't know about you, what is your form of sedation? Anybody on here with food? So it could be alcohol, it could be high sugary foods, high fatty foods, anything that gives us that temporary pleasure to take the edge off of all that stress. But to deal with that mental stress, now we're amplifying it by putting more chemical stress 
And then typically when we're engaging in those behaviors, what are we doing? We're typically sedentary, right? We're just kind of watching the TV, probably watching things that we shouldn't be watching or that's causing more and more stress in our life in the first place as causing our hormones to go chaotic, causing us to crave these things. And we don't know why we're craving them. We just know that we are. And we're trying to feed those cravings or trying to fight those cravings, but then it's overwhelming and we give in and hands up if you can see how this starts to amplify. This is bigger than a sleep issue right here. Okay. When we talk about physical stress, we got macro, we got micro. This all can impact your ability to get a great night's sleep. This could be car accidents, sports injuries, slips and falls, even birth trauma. And this can be things that happened years ago, but then we got the regular habituated habits. This is technology. This is posture, anything associated with that, that either it's your computer, it's your laptop, it's your tablet, it's your cell phone, it's in the car, poor sleeping posture while we're in bed, sleeping on our stomach, too many pillow, pillows, not enough support in the pillow, no pillow. All these things can start to add up over time. And sitting now has become the new smoking out there. And you see the sitting keeps us hibernated. It keeps us locked in. And yes, there is some, some truth and a lot of truth actually to living in this latitude in Northern Virginia and the amount of sunlight that we're exposed to. It's definitely not like at the equator, but you need sun. You need to get out of your house. You need to get out of your office. And if anything, this whole COVID catastrophe has kept us more isolated, kept us more inside. I hope that's not you, but that's many people that I speak to on a regular basis. But one of the best things that you can do is when the sun is coming up is to get outside for a 15 to 20 minute walk, allowing those sun rays to penetrate right through your eyes so that it stimulates receptors in your brain to create awakeness, alertness within your day to help wake you up, get you energized. And this is better than three cups of coffee in the morning or any energy drinks there. Because when the sun is received through the eyes in these receptors, it goes through the supra uh, chiasmic nucleus and it impacts the pituitary gland and the pineal gland which sets off a whole cascade of hormones and nerve connections that then tell your body when to eat, when to sleep. And we're gonna be talking about when to optimize your exercise here tonight too. But this will trigger these feelings and cravings on the inside when we are outside of living the healthy lifestyle that produces these habits. So. As we went through this, the circadian rhythm, your body is intelligent. It's incredibly smart. At 645, your body's starting to wake up. Now, I heard this said as we're talking about latitudes here. Is your body really is wired to wake up when it gets light outside and to go to bed when it's dark outside? But we have all these conveniences of modern living and artificial light that could start to trick your body into thinking that it's light when it's really not. But this is the rhythm you want your body in. And you wanna to try to follow this as closely as you can, knowing that you're not gonna be perfect with this. So I'm just gonna give you that pass. So if I have any perfectionists that are watching this right here, give yourself some grace here. This is the rhythm that you want to follow as closely as you can. But I get it when you're trying to provide food for yourself and your family, you have your work schedule. I just want you to understand this so that then we can, in the areas that you can be on point, that we double down in those areas to help create more um, uh, depth, if you will, within your health and wellness bank account. Because what we don't want to have happening is too many withdrawals that leaves you into debt. And yes, there is a a uh, thing called sleep debt. 
And so that when you lose the sleep, there's not really a thing where you can ever gain it back other than you can just get back into rhythm if your sleep cycles have been disturbed. Like for instance, if you travel over two or more time zones, for instance, or if you're up late, you get up early and you don't get your full seven hours of rest that adults need to be uh, repairing and recovering throughout the night. That's one of the questions. And thank you all for submitting your questions right here. How many hours of sleep does the does an adult need? You need seven. Seven is the target. That's the minimum. Okay, if you can get eight, eight, great. But anything less than seven, put your body in fight or flight. We'll get into that in a moment. But then as your blood pressure starts to rise, the sleep hormone stops. You got your highest alertness at 10. Then your best coordination at 2.30, fastest reaction time at 3.30, greatest uh, cardiovascular efficiency and muscle strength. That's why you see a lot of professional athletes training and performing in the afternoon. And then there's this whole thing that they've done studies on where you have NFL teams that are West Coast and they have games that go to the East Coast. And then they're starting to track wins and losses. And does a team that travels from the West to the East actually have an advantage or vice versa? Then your highest blood pressure is at 630 highest body temperatures about right now. And then around nine o'clock melatonin starts to secrete. Well, when you're on the computer or an electronic device, a TV, and it's emitting blue light, that actually blocks melatonin from secreting. So then you're not gonna feel sleepy. And then you wonder why you, you're tired, but you're not sleepy and ready to go to bed. It's because the hormones start to get disrupted in the body causing your body not to work the way that you think or feel it should work. You see cortisol, there, it's very appropriate. So as if we follow this circadian release of cortisol here at uh, 6 a.m., it starts to rise. And then throughout the day towards 6 p.m., 7 is starting to decrease. It should decrease throughout the night. But modern stressful living keeps it more as a horizontal line rather than this up and down ebb and flow. And when it stays elevated chronically, it keeps you and your body in fight or flight sympathetic stress response. And we're gonna get into the cascade of physiologic changes that happen when that's going on. And being chronically elevated with cortisol is limited exertion, too much sitting, not enough moving. and I'm gonna teach that walking is, that's where you wanna start, but we need to get to a point where we can get you sweating, panning, that type of thing. And then chronic psychological stress, we've covered that. There's a lot of world stuff going on. There's a lot of things going on with work, the home life, so on and so forth. All that stress keeps you in fight or flight because your body sees a threat, it sees an alligator. Now, you didn't see it before, but you're in the swamp with the alligators. These alligators are the chronic stressors that keep you on guard. And then ultimately leads to sleep deprivation. And these are unnatural schedules. When we don't have a natural schedule for sleep, then all these cycles get disrupted, like cortisol, melatonin is downregulated, insulin sensitivity is downregulate. So then your blood sugar starts to go up. That's when we start then storing fat. And then we store that fat around the waist because there were times of famine. That was the true uh, stressor for our hunter-gatherer ancestors. In the time of famine, then you didn't know when your next meal was coming. So then weight, uh, fat would be stored around the waist. But here, there is no famine, at least for most people. And around the world, that's still legit. But for most people today, you can eat what you want, when you want, the amount that you're eating it in. Then unnatural lighting causes the leptin hormone in your brain to go down, which then means your appetite starts to go up. Uh, ghrelin goes up. So then that pushes your appetite up. Cortisol. That is carb craving. That's going to the pantry, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. 
And then insulin is your fat storage hormone. Say fat storage. Did you say it? Fat storage hormone. That's what happens then when unnatural lighting and we're exposed to this lighting. Remember, when the sun goes down, that's typically when people went to bed. When the sun goes up, then that's when people got up. And I get it. You know, modern life, it's not going to allow us to do that. But I want you to have an awareness if you're not getting the sleep, if you don't feel like you're getting the rest that you're looking for, these are things that can be changed here. And just as I mentioned, all this, it starts to create a perfect storm leading to belly fat. So I get a question right here, are sleep meds okay? My question to you would be is, what's your goal? Are we trying to treat the symptoms rather than fix the root cause? Because sleep medications have never been tested continuous for more than six months. And every medication comes with some side effect. Side effect of sleep meds, dizziness, lightheadedness, headache, GI problems, prolonged day, daytime drowsiness, severe allergic reactions. That's a big one, especially if you have, if you're an allergy sufferer, okay, daytime memory and performance problems. So try high quality melatonin supplement instead, one to five micrograms milligrams, depending on your sensitivity level. And I was talking to Dr. Travis about this earlier, is you want to cycle that. So you don't want your body becoming dependent on that. So you want to cycle that. You do three weeks on with taking that supplement, do a week off and let your body build in some resistance. Now, remember a supplement is just a supplement. It's not to mask an unhealthy lifestyle. It's to supplement a healthier lifestyle. So think progress, not perfection, and then closing that gap. Here's high level health and wellness. Here's where you're at. You're just looking to close that gap. It, can I tell you, I, I want to make this as simple as possible when I tell you this right here. When you're aiming for high level health and wellness and right here is where you're at and you're like seeing this huge gap, you may have defeating thoughts of this is overwhelming. There is no way. Why even try? I'll give up. I want to encourage you that if you just increased it 10 or 20%, you're likely to see 80% gains in that gap. It's the 80 20 rule. We don't have to hit home runs every single day. In fact, I don't encourage, I do not encourage you to hit home runs or try to hit home runs with your health and wellness every single day. But what I do encourage you for my baseball fans is just get singles, get on base, get on base every single day. And the word is consistency. Consistency is the new intensity. If you were to take one or two habits that you're learning here tonight and you started to close that gap 10 to 20 percent, I'd love to have a conversation with you in 30 days and have you report to me, what are you noticing? Because behaviors matter, and this all impacts your nervous system, which is your master system. So if our lifestyle is incongruent or inconsistent with promoting health from the inside out, it's going to have a negative impact on the nervous system. And this is important because it's your nervous system that filters all the stress you're under all the chemical, all the mental, all the physical stress. Every, every cell in your body has a nerve supply. And it's your brain signal that go to the brainstem, your spinal cord, and out to these individual nerves that control health and healing. Your skull is your helmet, your spine is your suit of armor. Stress causes a condition called subluxation. Subluxation starts to irritate the nerve. And it starts to diminish those health and healing signals throughout the body. This stress and subluxation can inhibit your body from achieving deeper levels of relaxation to put your body in the state of optimal sleep. So our goal is to, on the front end, is to reduce the amount of stress coming into your body and system and to correct this, the subluxations that stress has caused in the first place. 
because there's a cascading effect here with the stress response. And the one that I want you to focus on is increased cortisol levels, which will decrease your immune response within the body. So subluxation causes health problems. Specifically to sleep are things like sleep apnea, thoracic outlet, restless leg syndrome. Let's talk about this a little bit deeper because these symptoms are merely a sign, a body signal of an underlying, a bigger underlying root issue. So cortisol, when we're under stress, it impacts the body in a way that is going to make it hard for you to achieve optimal sleep. But in addition to melatonin being downregulated, and in, in addition to blood pressure increasing and downregulating insulin sensitivity, it weakens connective tissue. Your immune system becomes impaired and it increases swelling and inflammation. So sleep apnea, this is a condition where air is not able to go through the airways into the lungs. And its causes can be rooted through subluxation in the neck through a mechanical or physical where the head and neck are shoved forward, likely because of too many pillows and it's obstructing the airways here. But then there's also a chemical component. The structural component, as a chiropractor, we evaluate C1 to C3, C6 and C7. And we evaluate the cervical curve in the neck, but then there's also a chemical component because likely these individuals, which is compl complicated by uh, obesity or being overweight, is an inflamed body. And when you have an inflamed body, there's going to be inflamed tissue around the trachea and the air pathways here. So this would be like consuming sugar, processed sugar, wheat or gluten. This is going to be the corn, the soy, the dairy, those type of foods inflame the body, inflame the tissues, which can lead and impact the sleep apnea. So this is a two part where we work structurally and then need to work with our patients on the chemical stressors. Thoracic outlet syndrome. This is if you sleep and and you, it, you can be awake when this happens too, but likely it's when you're sleeping and your hands and fingers go numb and begin to tingle. Thoracic outlet syndrome. This is when, when you find yourself tossing and turning a lot because of pain and discomfort in the spine. And right around this thoracic area, which is right at the base of the neck and right at the bottom of the rib cage, this area has the most narrow opening for your spinal cord to pass through. It's the most narrow area of your spinal canal. So there's not a lot of leeway here. And because of poor posture throughout the day, this can spill into night, poor posture while sleeping, and can impact T5 to T9. This is a physical or structural issue that we as a chiropractor help with by removing the subluxation or the stress on the nerves so the body can relax and there's less pressure on the nerve. The reason, if you're wondering why you toss and turn at night by trying to move position to position is your body innately is trying to relieve the pressure off of those nerves. So it gets you to change position. So that's why if you suffer with that, that's what's, what your body's trying to do. On the front end of that, we as your chiropractor can work on identifying where those subluxations are, working on correcting it, giving you better lifestyle behaviors to help support a healthy functioning nervous system and support your adjustments so that you'll be able to sleep better at night. And restless leg syndrome, if you've ever had this, this is super annoying. It's just like you cannot get comfortable. This is a neurologic condition, and this is related right at the base of the lower back and right, on the, right in the sacrum. So this is L4 to L5. L, uh, S1 to S3. This is just where your legs cannot get comfortable and you just continuously are moving them. The reason why you're trying to move them is because the stimulation on the skin of the legs is trying to bring some sort of calm 
to the neurologic disturbance that's going down the legs, making the legs restless in the first place. So in summary, the intelligence of your body functions through the nervous system. For 100% function and health, your nerve system must be free of interference. Subluxations caused by stress interfere with your body's innate intelligence and 100% function and are inhibiting you from achieving an optimal night's sleep and waking up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day. The adjustments correct subluxation. So secret number three, behaviors never lie. Your behaviors will drive your health outcomes. But what drives your behaviors? Who remembers what we talked about earlier? What drives behaviors? That's right, Karen. That's your beliefs for sure. Okay, Dr. T, I love that. Thank you so much for putting in there. There are a few great natural sleep aids or muscle relaxers that are awesome. So why don't you type that up in the chat? What are some of your favorites that you recommend to patients? And uh, maybe you've uh, tried in the past too that you know work. Great stuff. Okay, keep those nuggets going in the chat there. Behaviors never lie. So let's talk about this here. Our three-legged stool for optimal results for you, adjustments and rhythm. And your adjustment rhythm is based off of two things. That's it, our clinical findings and what your goals are. The second thing is we need to work on breaking bad habits. So I'm gonna go through a slide here that has, I don't know, about 10 different things, get ready, 10 different strategies, 10 different tactics here that I need to make sure that you're in line with. These are the bad habits that we're talking about breaking. And then corrective exercises. Strengthen the muscles along the spine to help your adjustments hold better. And when these three things are done at the same time over time is where your best results live. These are the things that you need to slow down doing. These are the things you need to stop doing and then these are the things that we need to start pivoting and doing day in and day out to produce better health outcomes. I love that, Joa. That's fantastic. Essential oils, they definitely can help the body become more calm and then relax too. Okay. All right. Best sleep practices. Use circadian rhythm as a guide. So if you want to get grab one of these copies right here um, of the circadian rhythm on your next visit, we're happy to print that out. Or you can look it up online. I'm sure you can find from the circadian co code right here, uh, Dr. Sachin Panda, PhD, brilliant man, circadian code. You can look this up. But use the circadian rhythm as a guide. And what I would recommend is for at least the next 30 days, you print it out and you put it somewhere that you can see on a regular basis to work as a mindset. Okay. So hours of sleep, we want seven for the adults. We're aiming for nine when it comes to our kids. Then you can get different technology, technological devices today to help them track this. You know, many people have an Apple Watch or there's Fitbit, there's Whoop, it's very popular, there's many of them. I just recently picked up an Aura ring. Dr. Travis talked to me about this right here. It's a little ring that you wear and it tracks your activity, it tracks heart rate variability. One of the markers that we test when we do your core score to measure how your body is adapting to stress. Of course, ours is a medical grade, so it's a more efficient and it's going to give a deeper reading, but now it's become pretty commercialized and you're still going to get a good reading with that. And then it tracks your sleep at night. It uh, tracks when you go to bed, when you wake up. So these are, remember, these are just tools. These are not going to be a solution. But if it's there and it helps leverage you to have better health habits, then that's how you want to use the tool. It's not to cause more stress. It's not to keep you more 
plugged in, as they say. But the idea is, is to use it to help guide better behaviors and habits so that it produces better health outcomes. As we want to get outside and experience daylight in the natural light. So I get it. Not every day in Northern Virginia is sunny, at least outside. So, but getting outside, getting out for a walk, breathing the fresh air, even if it's an overcast and cloudy is still healthy for the rhythms of the circadian clock in your body. Okay, we're gonna talk here for a moment on time-restricted eating. By a show of hands, does anybody know about time-restricted eating? Okay, awesome, Alex. Anybody else? Okay, there's, there's many others. You might, know it, you might know it as intermittent fasting. So what I can tell you is Dr. Panda, all right, I'm not advising to give you a free reign of eat whatever you want within a, an eight to 12 hour window, but you could start there. I do believe, and the research shows that what you eat matters. The quality of the food that you eat matters. For some, it may not matter, but that's my teaching because if you're eating unhealthy things, even though you're eating in a window, you're gonna have toxins that are gonna start to accumulate in your body. So you wanna keep it as clean as possible. But he goes on to say that if you were just to restrict the time that you're eating and cut it to a 12 hour window or an eight hour window, that in and of itself is going to be enough to help your body become in a better rhythmic, a better rhythm to produce health. So it's going to be more efficient in digesting their food. It's going to become more efficient in reducing the inflammation. You're going to allow your body to actually give itself a break because more often than not, we are consuming, consuming, consuming. We've been told that breakfast is the most important meal. So we wake up early and we're stuffing our face. Usually when we think about breakfast are a lot of carb heavy food items. Breads, you got wheat, sugar, dairy, soy, corn, those type of things. So let's say just even if we are at six o'clock, and then you go throughout the day, you have lunch, you have dinner, you're snacking throughout the day, and then you're up late at night in the wee hours having a snack. That easily could turn it into a 16 hour day where you're consuming food. And more often than not, we're consuming way more than what we need. Time restricted eating is where you shorten that window. Let's say you break your fast at 11 in the morning and then you stop eating at seven at night. Now, some of you might be like, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but that is nearly impossible with my current lifestyle, with my work, with my family. So again, all you're doing is trying to tighten it up a bit. Look for 10 to 20% improvement here. This is what's called intermittent fasting so that your body switches over to autophagy, which is then, your cells are cleaning up the debris in your body and ridding yourself of toxins. Plus then you're shortening up the window, which is making your body more efficient as it's processing the food that you're consuming. And then on the back end, it starts to use fat more as a fuel, which is very efficient within your body. The next thing right here is move. Now, I'm going to go back to this time-restricted eating because there was one other point that I'm making that I need to make here. Whatever your rhythm is, I want you to work on keeping it as consistent as possible. So what do I mean by that? 
is if you're aiming to get seven hours of sleep a night, then what I want you to focus on is whatever time you're waking up in the morning, I want you to keep that time that you're waking up in the morning, even if it's before sun, the sun comes up, keep that time consistent. So yes, that does mean on the weekends. And you're like, Dr. B, now, oh my gosh, we're making it too hard. I understand, but your body will pay you dividends in the way of energy, health, strength, and vitality. And look, you don't have to do this for the rest of your life. I would tell people, you just have to do it today or do this one day at a time, but challenge yourself. Maybe just keep that rhythm for 30 days and come back to me and report what you're noticing. So I'm a five o'clock guy. So waking up five o'clock in the morning every single day, that's my hour of power. That's where I focus on getting clear, grounded, and getting ready for the day. So it's five o'clock. So that means on Saturday and Sunday, wake up at five. So time we go to bed. What time do you go to bed? Whatever the time you go to bed, keep it consistent. So I, I personally aim to go to bed at 10. That's my goal. Do I always achieve it? No. Do I notice the effects of not keeping it in rhythm? Yes. But I try to be as consistent as possible. What I can tell you is that your investment in your health will pay huge dividends. It pays to be healthy when you get sick or injured. I was very grateful for all the time and energy and focus I had put into my health prior to my pec injury, which only helped in the recovery. So just know life is gonna happen. Stress is going to mount. There's seasons in your life where the stress is more than other seasons. And maybe it's just heavy all the time and you've just gotten used to it. But you want to build a bank account of health and wellness so that when the stress, when the dis-ease arrives, you have ample reserves to be able to handle it. So pick your time you're going to go to bed. Pick your time when you wake up. Try to mirror that as close as you can to the circadian rhythm and then stay consistent. My challenge to you is you don't have to do this for the rest of your life. Test it for you for the next 30 days and come back to me and tell me how your body is responding. The same thing with the time-restricted eating. If you're gonna hold an eight-hour window for men, I recommend eight. For women, I would go more to 10 because of different hormones with men and women. That's the reason. If you're struggling, trying to go 16 to eight, I would not advise that. This is some very high-level coaching here to strategize for you what's gonna be best for you. I would, if you're 16, I go to 14, 14 to 12. If you're at 14 now, go to 12. If you had 12, try 10. See if you notice a difference. You might find your sweet spot is 12. You got to test this out. It's hard to do and it's hard to focus because there's so much going on. But you matter. You are important. You are a priority. And continuing to put yourself on the back burner sacrificing for everybody else is only going to leave you unhappy, miserable, and unhealthy. So that when then you show back up to that relationship, you have zero to give. Who knows what I'm talking about? This isn't about being selfish. This is about taking ownership and responsibility for your health outcomes so that you can build more strength, more health, more vitality to be able to show up as a better you in all your roles that you play in life. So consistency is key. The next thing we need to move. Now we don't need to move at an intensity. I'll use an extreme like CrossFit. CrossFit's great. It's not for everybody, it's for certain people. But I'm not talking about that intensity right now. But what I am talking about is you need to move. You need to get out of your chair and best is if you can get outside while you're moving. And your goal is to have six 30-minute walks per week. 
six, 30 minutes. Doc, I don't have time. I got it. Well, do you think that heart disease, cancer, diabetes, all those chronic lifestyle diseases waits? No, they don't. Make time because they don't wait for you to be ready. They just start showing up. So need you to move. And movement is important. Not only does it help with the sleep rhythms, the circadian rhythm, but you're designed to move. Movement is a nutrient. It's just as essential as oxygen or water. Your body needs to move. You're designed to move. Your body was never designed to be sedentary. In fact, your body is designed to move all day long. So movement is key. Plus movement is going to flush out toxins in the body. It's going to help your body detoxify. And also mentally, it helps reduce the stress that you're under. So movement is key. E-fast. Okay, you're going to have to do your best here. But what are your technology habits before you go to bed? Is it right here? We're like stuck on our phone, social media looking at the, the news, we're seeing the crisis, we're seeing the pandemic, we're seeing the war, we're seeing inflation, doom scrolling, looking at all the doomsday things. It's just like stress, stress, stress. And then we lay our head down on the pillow and we're like, all right, ready to go to sleep. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Okay, so, so e-fast means take an electronic, you're fasting from electronics. Ideally, two hours before you go to bed. But look, if you're like glued to your phone right before you go to bed, start with 30 minutes. Start with 15 minutes. Take that 15 minutes and start to do a meditation. Start to focus on some breathing. Okay, I was looking for that. Four, seven, eight. Four, seven, eight breathing. Inhale for four. Hold for seven. Exhale for eight and then repeat. Repeat that six to eight times. Dr. Wild taught, teaches that of how to get your body out of a sympathetic fight or flight stress response and then put it into a parasympathetic rest and repair. All right, but I'm curious. I've been doing a lot of talking here. What are you guys hearing? What are you guys seeing for you? What do you know that needs to change when I'm talking about these sleep best practices? What's the one thing? Okay. Yeah, and Kate, like, look, you know, cereal, I get it, you know. What you may want to consider, you know, go organic. So maybe you're still consuming cereal, but it doesn't have as many toxins as uh, an organic cereal would have. And try to tighten it up within that window that we're talking about here. Okay, staying well hydrated for sure. Mercedes, yes, a question here. Can you drink coffee throughout the day when you do intermittent fasting? It depends. Depends on who you're talking to and what your goals are. But for myself is I allow myself to have coffee, just black, and I try to drink it the organic as much as possible. Because this regular coffee contains a lot of fungus in it and a lot of microbes and is unhealthy. So I try to do just black, no creamers, no sugars, no artificial sweeteners, no tasty concoctions, none of that. But I will allow myself to have coffee while I'm intermittent fasting. And I try to keep the coffee in uh, the last cup before two o'clock is what I try to. They teach mainly is nothing after no no caffeine afternoon because caffeine if you're having trouble sleeping the later in the day can disrupt your sleep cycles along with alcohol at the end of the day. Yeah, Doctor T, I get that. No eating before bed. Okay, this is a big one, Catherine. You can't take care of anyone else if you're not healthy for sure. Need to reduce the amount of stress in my body and go to sleep earlier uh, and at the same time. Yes, progress, not perfection. Yeah, making time for yourself is huge. Yep, Joe, just do your best, you know, move wherever you're at, 
just work on inc increasing that, okay? Yeah, the intermittent fasting, Kate, is very powerful. When I do this and I'm consistent with it, I have more energy than ever before. It's like my body is all of a sudden become a very efficient, power-producing uh, plant, which is fantastic, okay? All right, reduce alcohol and caffeine. You want a dark, quiet, comfortable bedroom. You want to have the bedroom as the sanctuary. You don't want to have the bedroom is where the stress is. So watching TV, stressful things that are going on, you want to have that as your sanctuary so that you know you have a place to go that is your place to unwind, quiet it down, center yourself, recover from the day, and reju rejuvenate your body for the next day. So there's the rhythm that we talked about, strive for perfection, uh, excuse me, strive for progress, not perfection, progression over perfection. So what should you do when you have these spine related issues is exactly what you're doing. Having your spine and nervous system checked for subluxation. If you haven't been to a chiropractor or do not have a chiropractor this time, getting your spine and nervous system checked for subluxation is a great place to start so that you can be evaluated to see how your body has been adapting to the stress that you're under mentally, chemically, physically, and to see what can be done in the most powerful, natural, effective ways to help you achieve not only better health, but better sleep. Through our evaluation process, we know what healthy normal looks like. Tonight, we identified normal healthy behaviors. Again, not trying to be perfect, but trying to close that gap to high level health and wellness where you're at, close that gap right there. Subluxation is a degenerative process that causes the spine to break down over time. If we catch it early enough, say phase one, we can help correct this. It, it took time for the spine to get like it is. It takes time to heal. The same thing with your rhythms of your body. When you start locking this in, Dr. Panda says, if you keep these rhythms and you commit to these ry rhythms and habits over two weeks, two weeks is long enough for you to start to see positive impact. You might see it sooner. If it takes a little bit longer, don't be discouraged. Just know that it just may mean that there's been more stress that your body has been adapting to over time. And phase three is when it's not correctable, that means there's so much stress that's going on, but what we could do is help prevent it from getting worse. And our nerve stress scans, when you get your scans initially, when you have progress evaluation, we could start to track how your consistency with your chiropractic adjustments and staying in rhythm, plus how you've done identifying and breaking bad habits, so reducing the amount of stress coming into the system. And if you're doing your corrective exercises, we can start to see your results measured out here, making sure that we're on track, ahead of track, or off track. Insanity. Remember, we talked about your health outcomes are driven by your health behaviors. The behaviors are doing the exact same things over and over and over again and expecting different results. That's insanity. When we evaluate our beliefs and buy into more empowering beliefs about our health and our wellness. We choose better behaviors to get us better health outcomes. In closing here, I wanted to share with you is that I'm gonna share with you a story about Gus. Gus is a 52 year old um, uh, IT executive and he has, uh, he's married, he has four kids, three boys. His passions are family and hockey are just too big. Uh, Gus came to see us because his wife sent him in, into the office. His goal is getting into the uh, office were to get out of pain, to be able to sleep throughout the night, be there for his family and continue to play hockey with his boys and his friends. Gus was desperate when I first met him. And the reason that his wife sent him in to see us is because he was a bit irritable. And see, Gus is a great family guy. 
Uh, but Gus had not, uh, he did not sleep for three days. So it's time to get something done here because his pain in his neck, pain in his upper back started to progress into his hands and his fingers. So when Gus came in, he was not sure he'd be able to, to do this because he travels a lot for work. He doesn't have a lot of extra time, definitely not for himself, but because things got progressed so quickly for him, he needed to get in as soon as possible because he was forced to need to make a change when it came to his health. So when Gus came in, we did an evaluation. We went through a thorough history. We talked to Gus about what his goals were. We did some objective tests, and then we went through the results. And when we went over Gus's x-rays, he discovered that he had nerve interference in his neck and his upper back that was the cause of his issues. Gus uh, suspected that the cause of his nerve interference was subluxation from all the hits in hockey, his computer use, work travel over the years. Gus got started immediately and he noticed benefits like feeling less pain, improved sleep, more energy, more focus, and a happier mood. At one point, he almost gave up because his life was getting busier and busier. After going back and forth in his own mind, he decided to keep going to the chiropractor because he knew that it was gonna take time to reverse the damage that was on his spine and nervous system over the many years. So what were Gus's results? Well, now Gus, he can sleep through the night. He can do what he needs to do throughout the day and is not limited. He's no longer ignoring issues and working around problems. He has the energy to be there for his family, even after a long day at work. Most importantly, Gus is enjoying his time with his three boys playing hockey. Plus his wife reports he's in a much happier mood. Now Gus has hope. He can see a better way to help because he's experiencing a better way to help real time. Gus is staying consistent with his chiropractic care and implementing the doctor's recommendations outside of the office. He recognizes that making time for his health is a lot better than waiting for a healthcare crisis to be forced into action. Gus is not only healthier and stronger, but he's happier too. His results are obvious to his family, his hockey friends, and the, his coworkers at the office. He shares his story about chiropractic and getting healthier, even at his age. How awesome is that? So I'm going to leave you here with a story about why we do what we do here. Willie Sutton was a famous bank robber. You can look it up, it's early 1900s. And Willie was credited with robbing over a hundred banks. He was caught three times, he managed to escape twice. Thank God he did not murder anybody but he kept robbing the banks. And on his final uh, robbery, he was interviewed later and he said, he was asked, you know, Willie, why do you rob banks? And Willie said, because that's where the money is. So why should everybody take care of their spine and nervous system? because that's where your money is. That's because where true health is. That's why we've created the health breakthrough experience for you. That's why we give you the recommendations of care that we do. That's why we spend time together educating you, Dr. Main's teacher, about healthy lifestyle habits that are gonna help your spine and nervous system function better so that you can adapt readily and appropriately to the stress that you're under and have more energy, more vitality, more strength, more health overall to be able to do the things that you need to do and do the things that you want to do in the most natural, powerful and effective ways. So when is the best time to take care, take care of your health? Today. So the third reason that we're in a healthcare crisis is procrastination. For many, we think that maybe it'll just go away. So you made some very powerful distinctions here tonight. You made some very powerful commitments, not to me, but you made these commitments to you. 
Procrastination is the thief of health. Look, we get an opportunity to finish tonight strong. I'm honored and grateful to be here tonight with you. And tomorrow is a new day. And you're going to get started. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But draw the line in the sand for you because you deserve it. You deserve to have the health that you desire. Make the investments today. Do the hard work now so it becomes easier later rather than taking it easy right now and having to make up and do the hard work later, which inevitably will cost more time, money, and energy. So if you have a family member at home that has not had their spine and nervous system checked, I'd be honored to have their health breakthrough experience with us. So we could check to see is, in addition to if they're having trouble with sleep, having any other concerns about their health, love to get them checked as well. Or if you have any friends or coworkers that's looking for a better way to help, we love an opportunity to serve them. If that's so, and if that's you, talk to one of our awesome team members that'll be able to help. Have a great night, have a blessed night. Thank you so much for tuning in here. And as Tony Robbins once said, it's in our moments of decision that shapes our destiny. I look forward to seeing you. We look forward to seeing you in the office soon and hearing about your wins, but not only your wins, but the implementation and the execution of what you're committing to, to help us help you produce he better health outcomes. Have a great night. God bless and go blue. We'll see you soon. Take care.